If you're looking for a fun-to-drive long-range EV that's likely going to have a better value proposition than a lot of the luxury EVs we've seen on the market lately, you might want to wait till 2022 because that's when the all-new Kia EV6 will be on sale. Apparently early 2022, we're going to get most versions of it. And then a little bit later in the year, we're going to get the new and more exciting GT version of the EV6. Kia has released a few new pictures of the EV6 that we haven't seen before, some video B-roll, and then more additional specifications. So let's just roll through the things uh, that Kia has sent along. The first thing that you'll notice when you take a look at the picture on your screen is that this picture, I think, better shows the proportions of the EV6. The wheelbase on this vehicle is equivalent to the Kia Telluride, so this is a bigger vehicle than some people originally thought. That also goes for the closely related Hyundai Ioniq 5. I think the EV6 looks a little bit bigger than the Ioniq 5 just due to the proportions of the vehicle and the redesign of the front end. This is very closely related to the Hyundai, but there are some key important differences. The first thing you'll notice up front is that we get a very different grill style than we've seen in other Kia EVs before. And of course, the new Kia logo, we're gonna see that on all of new Kias uh, in the United States market. The EV6 is gonna be a two row, five door crossover. They are calling this one a crossover. It's gonna be rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. In terms of general dimensions, this is gonna be closer to something like a Ford Edge or a Nissan on Murano than a Toyota RAV4. So if you're looking for something that is convenient, two row, easy to put passengers and cargo in, and a little bit bigger than the average compact crossover, you might wanna take a look at this EV6. Now let's roll through the video that Kia provided and go through some of the details that they've sent along. The first thing to know is that the EV6 is gonna be rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. We're starting to see that in a wide number of EVs. That means that in terms of driving dynamics, this is gonna be quite similar to something like the Ford Mustang Mach-E in all likelihood, obviously the modern Tesla lineup as well. It will also have the world's first 800 volt, what they're calling multi-charging system. Now the first 800 volt EV out there was the Porsche Taycan. The big thing to know about this version of an 800 volt system is that it can do really fast charging. That's one of the reasons that they're moving to 800 volt infrastructure. So this will go 10% to 80% in just 18 minutes, they claim. That's a gain of 210 miles of range in under 20 minutes. This is likely going to be the world's fastest charging EV, just barely eking out a win over the Porsche Taycan. But the big reason that this system is unique is that it doesn't require the option that the Taycan has in order to still support 400 volt charging stations. So the Taycan actually has a module on board that converts the older 400 volt system to the 800 volt architecture on the vehicle. I know that's a little bit complicated. The big thing to know is that you won't have to pay extra to still connect to some of the older 400 volt chargers that are out there and charge it 80 kilowatts or 100 kilowatts or 150 kilowatts, etc. So you plug this one into a CCS DC fast charge station and it will go just about as fast as any of the stations are able to go in the United States. They haven't told us peak charging rates yet, but I expect it to be over 270 kilowatts. Now back to the video here, you'll notice that they're plugging something into the charge port, which is hidden inside that rear tail lamp module. That is a vehicle to load connector. So this is one of the first vehicles that will support that function. Not only will you be able to charge another EV with your EV6. So say you have an EV that's run out of a bit of juice, you'll be able to plug one vehicle into the other to actually charge it. Or you can plug in accessories and there's going to be a built-in onboard 1.9 kilowatt inverter. It's basically using the same hardware that's onboard an EV anyway. So you can power projectors or a microwave or your house in case of a power failure or something like that. There's also going to be a high wattage outlet in the back seat, which is going to be a really handy touch. Now back to the outside, again, you'll notice that the front end look is quite different than other Kia vehicles out there. This doesn't have that same aggressive tiger nose feel that we have in other vehicles, although the designers and engineers claim that this still has that same general tiger nose feeling. Again, this is gonna be bigger than the average compact crossover. It's pretty low and it's pretty wide, but they are giving it all wheel drive. And of course, it's gonna get a hatch as well. Putting things in perspective, we're gonna have 19, 20, or 21 inch wheels from the factory on the EV6. So that is definitely giving you a better picture of the scale of what we're seeing in this vehicle. There are going to be two different battery packs. This is a bit of an interesting twist over what we're initially gonna see in the Ionic 5, it looks like. The rear wheel drive model will get a 58 kilowatt hour battery pack base 
167 horsepower, so don't expect anything too speedy out of that model. It's probably going to be performing very similarly to something like a Nissan Leaf. You can also get the rear-wheel drive model with a 77.4 kilowatt-hour battery. That's going to give you 218 horsepower. Then there's an all-wheel drive model that will give you 313 horsepower with the bigger battery pack. That's going to go 0 to 60, they're saying, in 5.1 seconds, so definitely pretty competitive. Then there's going to be the all-wheel drive GT with 576 horsepower and 0 to 60 in under 3.5 seconds. So that will be a very direct competitor to certain versions of the Tesla Model Y and, of course, the Mustang GT, the Mach-E GT, I should say there. That one is not going to be available until late 2022. Now, Kia is saying that the long-range battery version will be targeted at 300 miles of range. It's probably going to be the rear-wheel drive one, so expect the all-wheel drive one to come in with an EPA range very similar to the Mustang Mach-E with all-wheel drive. On the inside, you can see that we have two big LCDs on the inside and a two-spoke Kia steering wheel. So even though this is certainly futuristic, they've maintained a lot of the features that we see in modern Kias. So buttons on the steering wheel, touch buttons on the dashboard, a rotary shifter in the dashboard, an actual start-stop button for the vehicle as well. The interior is going to be made of a lot of recyclable materials. It'll have a Meridian sound system, as you can see here. And they're promising that most of the trims will offer an all-vegan interior. It doesn't look like real leather is available on any of the models. Now, as far as fast charging goes, this will be able to work with DC fast chargers rated from 50 kilowatts on up to 350 kilowatts. So all of the fast chargers basically that are out there now. For folks that charge at home or at the office, the onboard AC charger is rated at 11 kilowatts. On the big battery model, that will get you from 10% to 100% in about 7 hours and 10 minutes. That's going to be the most common way that people will be charging the vehicle. Now, back on the inside, again, you can see that rotary shifter there, the auto brake hold. There's a Qi wireless charging mat for your smartphone, two pretty big cup holders, and there are some buttons for the heated and ventilated seats. That center console floats above those controls, and so there's a place where you can put bags, purses, that sort of thing under there. Looks like we're going to get a pretty standard size moonroof on the ceiling, and we don't have any official interior your measurements, but it does look like that based on the size of the vehicle, this is going to be a pretty accommodating rear passenger area. We definitely have a flat floor in the back between the front seats and the rear seats. And Kia has provided some details of the motor under the front of the vehicle. One thing that's interesting is that they've packaged a lot of stuff under the front, and that means that we aren't going to get a front trunk the same way that we find in a Tesla or the Mustang Mach-E. Instead, this is more of a pizza box style cargo area under what looks like more of a traditional hood. That's obviously less handy than the front trunk that we find in the Ford Mustang Mach-E, but the Mach-E's hood, it looks like it's going to be a little bit longer, so the proportions of the vehicle are a bit different, and at least they've given us an area where you can very easily store your charge cable, charge adapters, that sort of thing. It is handy to be able to stash that charge cord or your Tesla tap or other charge cables and accessories somewhere easily reachable, even when you have a ton of cargo in the back. Speaking of cargo in the back, they're saying we're going to get 27.7 cubic feet of cargo space behind the second row, expanding to 53.5 with the second row folded down. So cargo space is going to be pretty similar to the average compact crossover, even though it looks like the interior is going to be a bit bigger. That shouldn't surprise you too much, of course, because this has a fairly low roof profile. So it's not as boxy and not as upright as something like a Ford Edge. The main reason for that, of course, is aerodynamics. There's a reason that pretty much every long-range EV out there, whether we're talking about an EV sedan or an EV crossover or SUV, looks sort of like a jelly bean. That is the most aerodynamic profile, so making sure the roof line is low, making sure it's relatively close to the ground, and making sure it is very aerodynamic is important to the range in an EV. Unfortunately, Kia has not released any pricing details on the EV6 just yet. They say that will happen later in calendar year 2021. Expect this, however, to be pretty price comparable to the base versions of the Ford Mustang Mach-E or the Volkswagen ID.4 because the base model is not going to be terribly powerful. It will be rear-wheel drive, but not terribly powerful. Now, since it's going to be rear-wheel drive, we don't know yet whether you'll get an expanded cargo area under the hood, but I wouldn't be surprised if that was at least possible. It's worth noting that this vehicle is going to have over-the-air updates, but it is not as all-encompassing of an OTA update as we see in the Ford or, of course, in modern Teslas. It says that there's going to be an available add-on, customer convenience map, and infotainment over-the-air update capability, but no reference in this document to entire vehicle over-the-air updates.
Be sure and let me know what you think about that down there in the comment section. I think that I'm okay with the infotainment system being able to be over the air updated without the rest of the vehicle being over the air updated. Because personally, I'm kind of okay if the vehicle, uh, the way that it drives, the way that the range happens, etc., that it's relatively static and maybe is tweaked now and then by a visit to the dealer or some other not quite over the air update, but I do like the fact that the infotainment system can be updated because Tesla has proven that uh, adding functions and features to the infotainment system is really popular. Things like the sentry mode, of course, uh, obviously ensuite games, YouTube, Netflix integration, things like that could happen to the infotainment system via an over the air upgrade. Be sure and let me know what you think about everything down there in the comment section below. I have to say I'm pretty stoked about the vehicle to load functionality and the vehicle to vehicle functionality. It would be handy to be able to just sort of help someone out, give them a few extra kilowatt hours that you might have uh, and help them not get stuck in those situations. We don't have too many details about the exact functionality of that system. It looks like there's gonna be an extension cord with a J1772 plug on each side, or logically you could just use that snap-on adapter and just plug your trickle charger basically into the other AV. And that would at least allow you to get out of a sticky situation if you needed to, and of course, power some limited lighting in your home in the event of a power outage. Be sure to hit that subscribe button at the bottom of your screen because I'm gonna have even more on the EV6 just as soon as I can. And we're gonna have a video on the upcoming Hyundai Ionic 5, which is very closely related to this over the next few days. I'll see all of you later.